<clears throat> okay, so today I'm going to try to lecture on, it's going to be like a lecture, uh, what I, my personal code of, it's not, it's not even right to call it a personal code of ethics, but my take on morality. And uh, there's basically two competing schools of thought in morality. There's the utilitarian and there's the Kantian. Uh, but there's also a third one, which is kind of related in some ways to Kantian, and it's called uh, ethics, or I mean um, virtue ethics. And uh, virtue ethics um, was actually the, is actually older than both of them, I think. I don't know, but because utilitarianism is a little bit like hedonism, but I think virtue ethics is the oldest one, actually. Um, doesn't matter. But basically, the uh, virtue ethics kind of appeals, like the what they talk about with the four cardinal virtues, um, those being, uh, you know, courage. Um, um, one of them is like moderation. One of them is... Um, Justice, or I, I don't remember, but basically, <laughs> basically, those four virtues are, I think, outdated. You know, you cannot really relate to them. You're going to need some kind of um, some kind of a better uh, group of virtues that you can try to appeal to in modern society to be able to um, act act um, not just morally, but uh, you know, really when you when you boil it down, like being just a good person isn't necessarily ideal. Like you want to be cool. You actually want to be like you want your behavior to be so to be such that um, it's not just good or it's not just likable, but then it's actually like necessary and uh, heroic and you know lots of um, you know there's there's obviously much better. Uh, better forms of behavior so so I came like I went through a bad series of depression in 2004 2005 and I was actually kind of having this uh, crisis of faith and not knowing how to because I was um, studying philosophy at the time and I was studying acting also and so I had this really hyper attentiveness towards behavior, judging behavior, and I was also studying like um, aesthetics and stuff like that, and so I was like, what? It was, the reductionist of it was just breaking it down, and there was nowhere to turn, so how do you, it was really, I was just in the state of nihilism, this moral nihilism, that it didn't matter what I did, and you know, like it was just a terrible way to think, really, and uh, I think I ended up sort of going, you know what, I need to just put my foot down and come up with some way to codify my, um, what I consider to be good, you know, I had to think like, you know, who are the people that I know that I just think are awesome, like how, you know, how are they cool, you know what I'm saying, like what is it about them, and you know, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't pick apart them like in person, but I did, I thought like what traits about these people, what properties of their behavior do I find attractive essentially, so. <clears throat> I, uh, I eventually came up with what I call modern virtue theory. And so I came up with um, six different virtues that, some, that any lay person could relate to. That if you maintain all of them at the highest levels that you can, because you have to understand they moderate each other. So, which old virtue theory uh, puts that forward, you know. you um, uh, Never mind. So... Basically, I came up with six, and I and I came up with an acronym. Uh, luckily, that I could use to remind myself: these are the six. Can I analyze my behavior, my dispositions, and see um, to what extent I'm expressing each of the virtues? So the acronym is CADICE, and it's spelled C-A-D-I-C-E. Okay. Now, just listen to the to the uh, to the different virtues that I've come up with. There's courageous, aware, decent, inspirational, comfortable, and enduring. And if you can have all six of these, then you are, you know, what I consider to be uh, very high up on this moral scale. Not just, you know, like you have to understand, like you could be morally good, but not like morally excellent. Like you, you would, 
you know, you might be a good person, uh, but your behavior might not save the day. But if you can maintain all six of these, that's likely to actually occur. Your dispositions will be good. In fact, I actually think that there's some health benefit to maintaining all of these dispositions mentally, even. So uh, I'll go down the list real quick. And, and you have to understand, like, um, a lot of people get caught. People have their own versions of virtue theory. They think, like, I'm not alpha male enough. I need to be, like, big and, and like, uh, oppressive and you know it just turns somebody it it's like it's there's it's not like you didn't discover something right good that you could be expressing through this idea of alpha maleness but um you know ultimately you're overdoing it you know and so that's not the virtue theory that works you have to maintain the other virtues at the same time so uh, once again courageous aware decent inspirational comfortable and endurance so courageous so uh, if you're courageous what you're actually what you're and I like how it's the first one too if you're courageous then what you have is initiative so that's important so whatever needs to be done if you have courage you will do it that's important because you don't want to be inhibited by by uh, like laziness or or um, uh, by um, unwillingness, so you know that's that's the first thing. You have to be willing to be good. You have to be willing to be moral, and that is a part of courage. You just um, you have to be ready to and to engage those virtues. The next is awareness, and um, awareness is important because it is the ability for you to know like uh, see the, the thing is, is that I, I chose awareness instead of say knowledge because um, that's important because uh, you know you can know a lot of things you can know a lot of useless facts trivial facts and not be said to be an aware person you know an aware person has really well categorized knowledge you know is his, his Categorical abilities are such that he understands how to how to see what's more relevant at, for the situation at hand. You know what people are thinking, what people need. Um, that's an awareness. It's not necessarily knowledge, and it's not necessarily uh, you know street smarts, but it's just you know you you more or less kind of you understand that X factor but you also understand that um, scientific factor at the same time uh, and I consider that to be awareness is probably a better way to explain it but so the next one is uh, D it's some um, decency and decency is very important because that is like moderation decency is uh, like a mixture between um, it's a mixture between, you know, it's it's something that moderates behavior. So in other words, like, you know, like you won't, let's say you're a courageous person and, um, you know, there, you see a chance to step up. You know, it's like, for instance, a dutiful per like somebody who is very dutiful, who is very duty-minded, uh, might just be a Nazi, you know, like a grammar Nazi might go oh you spelled that wrong or oh you know like see somebody does something and then the the nazi the the dutiful mind will go and say you don't need to do that you know but this is not the quality of a decent mind like a decent mind understands the limits like the decent mind understands you know when when is decency getting to the point that um when is it trespassing on decency such to the extent that in order to be decent I need to act but there's also uh, it's also a calling upon right so so while decency may moderate behavior like trim down on what you do it's also capable of making you bringing you into action right because you know like um, somebody does something wrong and if you're not decent you might just you know beat them up or you know if you um, if you 
are also not decent, you might not do anything. So, you know, to be a decent person, you, you know, you're aware of the concept of decency, which is, you know, where what can you tolerate? What is the the what is the um, what do they call that word? The parameters by which you would you would enact uh, some sort of intervention, or you know, but it's not just like cut and cut and you know cut and dry. I, I don't know how to explain it, but like you know. You're always acting. Like when you're you're not just standing there and then you act. You're you're standing there. You're looking. You've got an expression on your face. Uh, these all need to be moderated by these virtues, like um, decency. You know, like if somebody's doing something rude, you might not uh, go and say, "Hey, stop that rudeness." But you might, you know, and you might not even be like, "Uh, scornful." You might have this kind of like, you know, "Oh, you know, just don't pay attention to them." Or something, something that you would want other people to do uh, to sort of help inhibit that behavior, and that would be decency. Okay. So the next virtue is I, and that's inspirational. So this is like enabling. Like if you're an enabling person, then you tend to sort of help that person do whatever it is that they're doing, right? Because, um, but the problem is obviously you wouldn't want to use the term enabling because then you could be promoting the enabling of bad things so inspiration is a good way to put it so somebody starts talking to you and even if you don't care about what they're saying you just say yeah 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 and you know you let them continue and you don't you know you do not make them feel like you genuinely let them bring their thoughts and their behavior into fruition and you uh... and you, then you deal with that final product. You don't just cut them off or ignore them, uh, you know, as long as it's within that that decency parameter. Okay, so that's being inspirational. Uh, so let's let's remember we're, we're having to maintain all of these and they all moderate each other, you know. They all dictate uh, what, you know, they all check and balance each other. So the next one is comfortable and that's important because I think um, it's kind of like inspirational. You're capable of being in such a way that you are allowing other people to perform their behavior, right? If you're a comfortable person, like here's a comfortable person, just relax, okay? Like not even not even like that, like I'm not relaxed enough, but it's just like, you know, just like talking to somebody. But if you're not a comfortable person, you're just like, you know, looking looking for where to act. Then, then you heighten the stress level. You, you're more abrasive. Abrasive is a good way to uh, provide the antonym to what the concept that I'm trying to get across with uh, comfortable. If you're a comfortable person, then people can make mistakes around you. You don't even recognize them as mistakes. You just sort of, you know, you're something that people uh, have the ability to behave around you. So that's just it's important. You have to just think about it you know it's not it's not like um, these explanations are necessary for you to understand but I'm explaining it just for your benefit but if you ask yourself you know hey am I being am I courageous am I aware of this situation am I you know decent you know is is this within is my behavior decent is it inspirational is it um, comfortable and uh, there's also the next one endurance now, endurance also very important because endurance means not you know whereas courage you would be the initiative endurance is the get it done finish it out you know see it through see it through uh, but it also means uh, sort of like uh, consistency right because you know like um, let's say uh, let's say something happens which would psychologically distress you and uh, you become unreliable, then you're not an endurant person. You're not uh, the same. You know, you're not you're not what you were, what you need to be, all the time. You actually have to have some sort of. You have to build this uh, very consistent and, and uh, smoothly transitioning person. You know, like okay, let's say something bad happens, like a like a meteor strikes, or you get abducted, and you get dropped off in, on a deserted island. Um, you know, are you going to be the same person? 
uh, or are you going to absolutely be like off the wall I don't even know who this person is that's bad like you don't want to be that inconsistent you want to have endurance uh, which is to say that you want to have consistency also you want to it also means you know seeing things out being consistent regular in fact that's where you know the term confidence comes from I don't like people saying oh you're just not confident you're just not confident well that doesn't mean anything I hate when people say those sort of things to help you understand your behavior and you know so I finished it up let me go ahead and continue so people say oh you should be confident or you should just be yourself and it's like does not mean anything what you said that advice sucks okay I can't not be myself um, so what was I can let me continue so yeah all right well that's it um, modern virtue theory uh, try it out it'll it'll help you uh, even in the roughest situations you know you're about to go on stage you think like am I being courageous you know these are things that you you know most people aren't even conscious of but when you are conscious of them and you're having this crisis of faith or you're somebody that just misbehaves or you know you're somebody that wants to be cool but you're not because you're too um, you're too un, unused to interacting in public then uh, this is good advice because you could just um, you have to begin uh, trying to exercise all of them and you must remember that all of them must be acted for every action you can just ask am I courageous aware decent inspirational comfortable endurant and then just chant that and be that you know your dispositions will give will be given off to others and um, You'll, it'll be like it's just a formula for cool at least in modern society that's why I call it modern virtue ethics